Hi, right, back for another beer review, and today I'll be reviewing yet another collaboration beer. This time between Hot Butcher for the World and the Half Acre Beer Company, both of which are out of Chicago, Illinois, and this is their Roost. So they're calling this one a Centennial Hopped Extra Pale Ale. It comes in a 6% alcohol by volume. No IBUs less than time of review. This can is approximately seven weeks old. I'm going to give a huge thanks shout out once again to Hot Butcher for this beer. So big thanks to them in the description box. I'll post a link to the beer mail video I did that contains all the goodies they hooked me up with. And this is another one of their uh, tap room slash retail store exclusives at their new brewery in Chicago. I don't think this made any distro, so it's really awesome. They sent it my way because otherwise I would have no way to get my hands on it. Plus, it being a collab with um, Hot Butcher and Half Acre, they've collabed before on, uh, I think it was IPA Your Way, which I enjoyed. And the fact that it's an extra parallel, which you really don't see anymore, is fantastic. So an extra parallel, I feel like they were pretty popular back in like the early 2010s, maybe mid 2010s, you would see uh, the acronym XPA. Basically, it's a step up from an American Pale Ale, but like not quite to an American IPA. So a little bit more bold, a little bit more hop forward. This one has Centennial Hops. I'm expecting somewhat of a clear beer. I don't know if it's going to be you know, crystal clear, but uh, I'm thinking, you know, old school vibes, this one, especially using Centennial. I'm thinking like citrus and pine, you know, maybe a little bit of like a bready malt character, something like that. I don't know. We'll see. I'm kind of excited about this one, though. Um, pretty cool. They actually brewed something like this and released it. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's not I don't think it's going to be like crystal clear in the glass, but it definitely has old school. I mean, it might be, though. Hang on. Hang on. You know, I may have spoke too soon, but I think that is an old school clear beer type of um, feel to this one for sure. Anyway, <clears throat> I was looking for paper towels, but I forgot to bring a little bit of Dirty Glass Mafia going on <laughs> recently here with a uh, my water and whatnot. I wash it the same every time. It seems in like the colder months, I get a little bit more dirty glass mafia. I don't know what kind of science is behind that, but uh, it's kind of frustrating. Not that it matters. It's not like bad, but we'll stick into the side glass anyway. So yeah, hold up to light. Yeah, that, that's not like super crystal clear. There's very fine particulates, but it's pretty much clear beer to some extent. Has a lot of carbonation. I think the both of the Hot Butcher glasses has the nucleation to promote the uh, carbonation at the bottom there. I uh, had about a finger of a soap sudsy bright white colored head that is now dissipated to like a half finger. But yeah, that looks like an old school like American parallel or in this case an extra parallel. It's good nose. I'm not getting a ton. I'm getting a little like faint grapefruit and orange, like definitely citrus vibes. A little bit of like a floral, maybe I could reach for pine. There's definitely an underlying like sweet, like bready, almost toasted uh, white bread, maybe a touch of caramel. There's a little bit of lemon too. So definitely citrus uh, forward. There's grapefruit, there's orange, there's lemon. But I'm not going to BS you and be like, oh, this is super flavorful um, in terms of, well, I shouldn't say flavorful because I haven't tasted it, but the aromatics are not punching me in the face. Again, it's an extra palate, 6%. I don't expect the aroma to be over the top, but I'm not getting a ton, just very, very small. It's subtle. It's subdued. But it doesn't smell bad, so let's get into it. Cheers, everybody. Thanks again to Hot Butcher. This is like an old school to me, tasting it like, almost like a English parallel. That's fun, that's fun. Is it necessarily delicious? Maybe not to my palate, but it's good and it's fun. And man, is there like a firm bitterness, that's cool. Body's like lower side of medium, approaching medium, fine for 6%. The mouthfeel, it's definitely uh, crisp on the palate. A lot of. A lot of spritzy carbonation. It's effervescent to some degree. It's not like overly so, but it's definitely spritzy on the palate. Relatively smooth beer in general, though, like going down. It's it's also pretty clean, almost lager-esque in how clean this is. The taste. This is where I don't BS you and say, oh, I'm getting, you know, 5,000 flavors and oh, this is happening. It's a very simplistic, subdued, easygoing, 6%. Extra pale ale. Uh, front of the palate, there's a slightly like toasted white bread into like a caramel. And that's omnipresent on the palate. It's kind of always there, but never like the predominant note, which is appreciated. Then right after that, I get citrus. And it leads with like white grapefruit, white grapefruit rind. 
into like a ruby red grapefruit, like it snowballs. Then you get touches of orange, like an orange peel, a lemon peel. And that's all at the, the front of the palate. As it continues and passes through the palate, that citrus starts to dissipate. And then there's this really nice piney, floral, kind of resinous hop tone. And this beer finishes moderately bitter. Semi to full on dry, more to the semi dry side of things, but the bitterness is moderate. For something six percent, the moderate bitterness might be a bit much for some. I think it really makes this beer more drinkable because it's not. This is not a sweet like hazy or something, right? You could I could pound a lot of these. Maybe after two or three of them, we'll say sixteen ounce cans. I would probably want to move on to something. I think at that point, maybe the bitterness would be a bit too much, but you could definitely drink a couple cans at the very least of this if you like something within the style. Six percent, you really can't taste it. Yeah, this is again a very old school something that you know eight to ten years ago, I think a lot of people would pick up and be like, oh, that's pretty damn good. Nowadays, I don't know, you know, with your haze bros and people who love hazies and pastry stouts and fruit smoothie stours and all this stuff, will they pick this up and appreciate it? Probably not. So I'm going to give two ra uh, two ratings. One's going to be stylistically and kind of what they're going for, and the one will be my personal rating. And I'm not going to BS you and be like, this is what my palate craves nowadays. Not really. What I'm really enjoying, if you ask me like hop forward, what do you really want? Obviously, like a really well-made hazy IPA with a solid bitterness. But I'm loving those new school West Coast IPAs that like North Park are doing, where it's like, it's old school meets new school, but like in the best way possible. Those, I wish more breweries would brew because... It's, it's your, you know, old school West Coast IPAs, but more of like a, um, you know, New England flair to it without like the, all the hazy, crazy, over-the-top mouthfeel. This, though, this is, I think, proper for what they're going for. Of course, there's a hair on it. Why wouldn't there be a hair on it? Um, but anyway, Roost, collaboration between Hot Butcher and Half Acre. Uh, for what they went for, I think this is like a 4.25, 4.3. My personal preference, again, this is not going to be something that I would like you know, go to, um, like, let's say they release this again and it showed up here. I might buy a can or two just to have, but it's not my favorite. So I, I got to be honest with you in terms of rating. I think if you love this style, you're probably going to like this beer. If you don't, you're probably not. I'm somewhere in routine. So I'm going to give this beer a high 375 out of five and go 3.8 out of five. But keep in mind that ratings don't really matter in the grand scheme of things. Um, just let it be known this is a well-made extra parallel. And I think they did a damn solid job on it. So Kudos to them. Uh, price point availability, I have no idea because they sent it my way. I would imagine the 6% extra pal, probably in the $12, $13 range at their brewery. And again, uh, as far as availability goes, it was only at the uh, tap room and the retail store. Otherwise, this did not see a distro. But if you've had this one before, post in the comment section. Let me know what you thought about it. I think it's really good. It reminds me again of a well-made extra parallel from 8 to 10 years ago. And there's nothing wrong with that. So thanks to Hot Butcher. Thanks to everybody stopping by. Another beer review here in the Beer Patrol. To the next one. Cheers.